Our focus is really fundamental analysis applied to growth investing. And the metrics of importance change based on style. So again, it's not that fundamentals don't drive companies in other industries or sectors, but just the metrics that we look at are gonna change. So uh, the best example I like to use is a commodity stock. The simplest thing out there is a gold stock. I mean, for years I, I traded them and it's a very simple business model. You take gold out of the ground and you sell it to somebody. Now, if the price of gold overnight goes from $1,400 to $1,600 a share, I don't have to wait for the next earnings report to know that this company will be instantly more profitable. So a commodity-based company clearly has a very, very strong correlation to the actual commodity price itself because that is the direct determinant, apart from you know, some other minor factors of, of the business, of what profits will be for the next quarter and the next multiple quarters. So for example, so for a commodity-based stock, the metrics of importance are gonna be different than there will be for growth investors. Now for growth investors, the key variables are earnings, sales, and the growth of those earnings and sales. Again, we're looking for that gold mine next to the gold mine. We wanna know that that gold strike is continuing into the next property to keep the, uh, the idea going. So basically, we wanna see is the growth that this company experienced in the past likely to continue. And some of the best ways to see that is you want record earnings, you want big earnings, you want consistent sales, and you want good forward estimates. You wanna see is that trajectory going to continue. And if you combine that with your understanding of the story, suddenly you can really get a good sense of what this company's future prospects are. Our focus is secular growth. And so the key questions you have to keep asking yourself is, is there a new product, a new technology, or some kind of economic shift that is affecting the industry as a whole? It's really important that you dive down and you figure out which of these key elements are affecting this company and this growth. And is it likely that it will continue into the future? Whenever you're confused, whenever you're going through scans and you're overwhelmed by variables, or you're looking at many charts, go back to these same questions. Is it changing our life, the way we live, the way we work, the way we play? If it's doing one of those things and it's new and they're doing better than their competitors and those are showing up in your earnings and sales growth numbers, chances are you're onto a mega trend which really will shape the world around us. I mean, if you look back, it's so obvious in hindsight. If you look at Apple when they introduced the smartphone or you looked at Netflix when they, they brought streaming TV, every major company you see today was pretty much at one point a small company with a new product, a new service, or a new technology that dominated its market. And it's just really important that you always ask yourself those important questions when you analyze a stock. Now, when you can really visualize this long-term potential for a stock, it allows us to use our trend-following techniques to deliver these big returns that we're looking for. We're gonna time our entries with tight risk and allow the price to advance for long periods of time to harness these huge gains. But you know, just because you know what the story of a stock is and, and its potential, the real hard part comes in knowing when to buy, when to hold, and when to sell. It's just not enough to know the fundamentals. And we'll even take a look later at how often bad breaks in the stock price occur when fundamentals are still great. But it's really the hardest part of putting this all together. And that's why having an entire system is so key. And it's so key that each element of your system really comes together to reach your goal and reach your target and what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, also think back, how many stocks look great in the past? but how many apples are in existence? Many times a stock has great prospects, even a great stock chart, yet things change. There's new competitors, there's industry shifts. I mean, you could have had a great airline company, but once COVID hit and shut down your airline, whatever prospects you had in 2019 were not the same prospects you had in 2021. So investing is full of risk and growth or expecting growth is not enough for big returns. I mean, if you look at Canada, you know, I'm, I'm a Canadian, so I, I know a lot of the, the companies here. And Nortel, which was one of the, the darlings of the dot-com craze, was the crown jewel of Canada. It was our biggest company. And that stock went from the king to zero, bankrupt and delisted off the board. I mean, Palm Pilot was the first smartphone and Netscape was the first browser, yet neither of those companies are either in existence today or, or, or never mind being successful. So it's really important that you really tie everything together and you have risk management and timing to combine with your fundamental view. So now let's dive into the strategy. Let's look at what the key variables are for fundamental analysis and how this can really help us find the next big winners. We can do it. I've done it. And it's right there for you to see. So let's dive in. So when looking at what financial metrics matter most to a stock's explosive upside growth, I want to 
narrow it down to the key variables that have the most impact on the stock. So there are many variables we can look at. Uh, the CanSlim system that was created by William O'Neill really gives a fantastic breakdown. And I'll keep referring to this book over and over. It's really the companion for this course, in a sense, where he dives into each number. Uh, but what I really want to look at here were the key variables that really are the must-haves that you can't ignore. And without these variables, you will not find these very large stock advances over long periods of time. So the first example I want to take a look at is DocuSign. DocuSign obviously has changed the way a lot of the world operates in terms of signing contracts and important documents. This was definitely accelerated due to the whole uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. However, their growth was clearly on track before that began. And what I think is most important to look at here as a first example are if we take a look at the annual earnings per share. So these numbers you know, represent the amount of earnings per share for each year, such as 2018, 2019, and so forth. And if we take a look here, when this move began um, in 2019, we were accelerating our earnings from minus 74 cents in 2017 to an eight cent loss in 2018. And 2019, as the move began for the stock, we had our first year of positive earnings and it was quite an acceleration from the year before. And as COVID set on, we had a huge jump from nine cents a share to 31 cents a share. And as you can see, the trend just keeps accelerating, whereas for 2021, 20, uh, we're looking at 90 cents a share. So that's a tripling of earnings for those, for those years. And that's really what underpins this massive growth move. If we look here at the stock, we were at $60 a share in uh, you know, September of 2019, and we rolled, went all the way up to about $300 a share or a five-fold advance, somewhat in line with the actual growth in earnings. What I think is very important to look at though, and, and one of the must-haves that I have, as important as earnings per share growth is, even on an annual basis, I always wanna make sure that they're accompanied by strong sales growth. The reason for that is, is that earnings on an accounting basis uh, can be affected by many variables. There can be one-off uh, earnings impacts by selling real estate or, or, or a number of ways that you recognize earnings at different points. Sales is somewhat of a more consistent number that is very difficult to, to play around with. So it's next to impossible to show huge sales growth over long periods of time without that sales growth really driving home. And that's why if we take a look here at sales along the way, this is a quarterly breakdown of sales where you can look at each quarter, such as the July 19 quarter, the October 2019 quarter, the January 20 quarter we have tremendous sales growth, but not only is it tremendous at 41% you know, growth, 40% growth, 38% growth, what's very important is the consistency along with the size. And so when these large institutions are buying these companies, because the, the driving force behind all of these stock moves are these enormous institutions that are, are purchasing these stocks for weeks and weeks at a time to establish a position, what they want to see is consistency. So if you're trying to establish a multi hundred million dollar position in a company you and it takes you weeks or months to establish that position you only want to put on that kind of exposure if you can really see a long runway for this growth to continue they you know these large institutions can't move in and out of a stock as quick as an ind individual investor can and for that reason this track record of consistency and this view of consistency going forward is absolutely critical and i think that's why sales is just so important to be lined up with earnings because that really shows that the earnings are being driven by a new situation, a new product, and the sales growth is there to support the earnings growth. Before we move on to some other examples and some other stocks to, to really bring this point home of this large earnings per share growth, I just want to highlight some other key metrics that are available here in this platform, which I'm using, which is called MarketSmith. It's a part of Investors Business Daily. If you're unaware, Investors Business Daily was founded by William O'Neill, who again is the founder of the Can Slim system. So this is really a great software in that it's completely designed to show all the pertinent financial metrics that you would need when analyzing a company, a growth company. And so if we take a look here at the number of funds that, that own DocuSign, in June of 2020, there were 1,277 funds. And if you can see quarter over quarter, there were just a dramatic increase in, in the number of funds that own this company. So again, going back to that runway and funds wanting to have a long runway of, of ownership because of the liquidity, the, the inability for them to enter and exit a company, you can really see that the fact that you had this consistent sales, consistent earnings growth, 
really led to more and more institutions jumping into the stock. And that really is what leads to these towering moves higher. Again, some other key points to look at um, are management owns 14% of the company. Obviously, you want management to be on the side of shareholders, and there's no better way for that to happen than if they actually own a good portion of the company. Uh, as well, there's the return on equity of a 42%, which shows how efficiently they're using their capital uh, to, to run the company. And so you can see a lot of the financial metrics are extremely positive for DocuSign. But if we can boil it down to the key metrics, uh, you know, because there are so many things to look at and sometimes it's overwhelming, the key metrics is you really want large, consistent annual earnings, record earnings, supported by sales. And of course, if that's the case, that you have large annual earnings per share growth, that will come through on a quarterly basis as well, which we'll, we'll take a look at in some other examples. So let's move forward to Shopify. Shopify is probably Canada's crown jewel at the moment. It's, it's our, the largest co uh, company in the country. And very much like DocuSign, we can see that there was towering earnings per share advances that really propelled the stock higher. And I'm not talking slightly higher. We're talking about a 37-fold move in just four years. Now, I've spent a lot of my career focused on technical analysis and chart patterns. But as I mentioned before, what really drives these substantial moves higher are earnings per share growth. There's no way around it. I mean, a company is more valuable the more that it can earn a profit. And if we take a look at Shopify's earnings per share on an annual basis, the same story that we saw with DocuSign is present here with Shopify. We had a 12 cent deficit in 2016. In 2017, we delivered our first year of annual growth at 15 cents. In 2018, we had 38 cents. 2019, we actually paused earnings growth with 30 cents. And I would argue that's why we had this period here in late 2018 where the stock kind of stopped moving higher because as we'll see later, investors are always forward looking. But this major advance where we really just towered higher is we can see that we went from 30 cents in 2019 to $3.98 in 2020. An absolute surge higher. And this stock just propelled itself from $60 a share to almost $1,600 a share. An absolutely incredible move. But again, just as with DocuSign, this was an earnings in isolation. Let's take a look at sales growth. We can see here from the June 2019 quarter, we've had substantial sales the entire time. So we had 48% sales growth in June 19 quarter. The 17-19 quarter was 45% growth. And that 45% growth was the weakest quarterly sales growth for this entire period, this, this two-year period. And we've been accelerating. And now, not only is it incredible if you stop and take a look that sales have been accelerating, but this is a very large company with a current market cap of $175 billion. To think that a, a company with a market cap of in excess of $100 billion can still grow its sales at triple digits is absolutely staggering. Now that's where you really, two important pieces come together is the fact that these institutions want to purchase these companies over many months because they want a long runway the smaller the company, the more difficult it really is for them to purchase shares because their buying power have, will have a much larger impact on the stock price. Just as you want to buy a stock price as cheaply as possible, so do institutions. And for that reason, when they can find a large company growing with you know, fantastic sales and earnings growth, it's easier for them to establish a position. So that actually attracts even more funds to a company because there's additional liquidity for them. And you can see over the same time period, from the June 2020 quarter to the March 21st quarter, you know, funds went from 1,400 funds of ownership to 1,968 funds. So essentially, you had an enormous amount of funds trying to purchase this company. And the reason they were, were it was the towering earnings per share growth supported by sales growth. Let's move forward and take a look at another uh, gem of 2020, Zoom Communications. So Zoom Communications, just as DocuSign changed the world of contracts, Shopify is reworking the world of e-commerce, Zoom has changed the way we communicate in, in the modern day. And I think it's kind of become ubiquitous that everyone uses Zoom uh, in, in their work life, even in their personal life. That really goes back to what William O'Neill teaches in that, you know, the company should be changing the way you work, the way you play, uh, the way you, you live your life. And those two other companies, as well as with Zoom, have really accomplished that. And along with changing our lives, the massive earnings and revenue growth was there as well. And so we can see here, 
In 2018, Zoom lost a penny per share. In 2019, it made six cents a share. Although I know six cents a share is not a large amount, it's really that, that growth factor in earnings per share that is what's most pertinent because that is setting the trend as to how fast the company is growing. And from 2019 into 2020, we, had, you know, we went from six cents a share to 35 cents a share. And in 2021, we have $3.34 a share, an absolutely enormous increase in earnings per share. And that's why there's no coincidence that the stock price went from about $80 a share in, in late 2019 to $600 a share at the peak of the COVID pandemic. Now, again, this was not only very large annual earnings per share growth. This was supported by absolutely enormous sales growth. And that was really present even before COVID hit. As you can see in the July 19 quarter, we had 96% sales growth. In October 2019, you had 85% sales growth. So although, okay, yes, it did accelerate to 355% sales growth due to COVID, this was a company that was growing extremely quickly. And there's really no better recipe than huge earnings per share, huge sales growth, and acceleration of that trend. That is just what leads to towering price advances. And as you can see here, actually, uh, even before COVID hit, then you had this steep drop in the S&P 500, which obviously led to an enormous move here for, for Zoom Communications. You already had an extremely strong move off the bottom as the growth story at Zoom was re-accelerating higher. Again, before we move on to our next example, let's just take a look at some other key metrics. As you can see, the return on equity is 42%, which is very strong. Management owns 13%, which coincidentally is close to the same ownership as DocuSign, although I'd say that's more of a coincidence. And you see that funds have been buying this quarter over quarter over quarter. So there are a lot of great metrics to be aware of, but really the towering earnings and sales is what leads to these spectacular moves. Now that we're aware that annual and quarterly earnings and sales are so and very important, I want to dial in and show you how important it is to have acceleration in those factors. So we had a quick view of that before, but I really want to bring that point home by studying NVIDIA. NVIDIA is another massive success story going from $40 a share in 2016 to about $800 a share as we speak. This has all of the same qualifications and criteria that Zoom, DocuSign, and Shopify had. If we take a look, we had $1.67 per share in 2016, and in 2022, we're expecting almost $16 a share. That's a tenfold move, and that actually led to a 20-fold move in the stock price. But if we look at the points where this stock really had towering advances, such as 2016 and 2017, what really led to those powerful advances was the acceleration of earnings per share. So once you see that the annual earnings are at records and you see big growth, I like to dial into the quarterly earnings per share numbers. And if you can see acceleration there, that is going to get funds running towards your stock. And we can see here, I, I highlighted the earnings per share per quarter. Uh, that's at the bottom of the chart here, a little bit higher so we can see it better. But we went from 18 percent growth to 21 percent growth to 39 percent growth to 55 to 104 to 117 percent earnings per share growth per quarter and that's just a staggering advance and that is really what drove this huge move higher from 40 dollars a share to about 340 dollars a share in just within two years although we went higher later the big bulk of the percentage return for a stockholder was really in that 2016 to 2018 period Eventually, we even got the triple digit earnings per share growth per quarter, which is fantastic. Again, this is a situation where the bigger the numbers, the better the situation for the company and the stock. And so you would like to see triple digit earnings per share and sales growth. You really want the best of the best. But what's even better than triple digit earnings per share growth is accelerating earnings into triple digit per share growth. That's absolutely fantastic because the story is accelerating. Whoever doubted that the story was going to continue is being proven wrong. Not only is the company continuing to grow, but it's growing at an accelerating pace. So people who were wrong want to have to change their mind and start buying the stock. People who had expectations of growth, but this outpaced their expectations, they may increase the amount of stock they buy. And this just basically forces everyone to reevaluate the potential of this company upwards. And when that happens, the stock price goes with it. But one key element that I want to look at here and bring to your attention, apart from the accelerating earnings per share, per share growth, 
is investors are always forward looking. Now, we'll get into exactly why that's the case and what kind of other tools they have later on in, in the selling section. But if we look here, invest, the stock price actually peaked several months before earnings, actually, earnings growth actually turned negative. So in this situation here, we're not actually looking at negative earnings by the company, but just a reduction in the amount of earnings they're making. So that's why there's a negative growth rate. And that came out a couple of quarters later, or at least one quarter later, but by then the stock had already f fallen quite a significant amount. And not only do investors in you know, large funds have an idea of what earnings and sales would be a, a quarter or two ahead when they sell, they can also start to forecast that when they buy. So if we take a look at when Nvidia started its next large move higher, that actually began several months before earnings and sales started to reaccelerate to the upside. So through my studies, I've noticed that institutions can usually pretty much judge what earnings and sales will be about three to six months in advance, and they'll begin buying and selling in anticipation of those results. So as an individual investor without probably the, the advanced reach of these large funds, using solely historical earnings per, per share and sales numbers, which were reported last quarter, is really insufficient to cover everything that you need to invest successfully. That's why it's so important to tie together technical analysis with your fundamental analysis because oftentimes the numbers will be changing and they'll only be reflected after the stock has moved significantly. So we'll see this time and time again as we go through multiple examples, but essentially the institutions have a three to six month advantage over us, but that doesn't mean that we can't be extremely profitable investors. What's really important, again, if we go back to the key points of what we're looking for is a long trend in earnings and sales growth. And we want to get on top of that for at huge moves in the stock price. And that is absolutely attainable. And when those numbers are starting to change and institutions have advance notice, we will know because the chart and the price action will notify us. So the next company I want to take a look at here is Denbury. The main point I want to drive home here is you really want to have record annual earnings per share growth, or at least a multi-year high. Because if we're trying to find a company that's growing very strongly with a long trajectory, that can't really be the case unless you're really making some kind of record earnings growth, I mean, or and record earnings. So that's really what I want to drive home by looking at Denbury. So Denbury is a stock in the oil and gas sector. And in the 2020, COVID pandemic, oil prices have rebounded rather significantly, but not all oil companies have had the same kind of response to the advance in the oil price. And this is a company that was on my radar, and the reason it was is that it had a restructuring, and that took a lot of debt off the balance sheet, and that led to record earnings for 2021 of $2.02 .02 a share. We're basically looking at twice the earnings of the best year of the past eight years. And that is really what led to this towering stock advance. If you would compare Denbury to other oil and gas companies at this moment, you would see that many of those are just struggling to get back to the same kind of earnings they had only a couple of years ago. Whereas Denbury is having record earnings in 2021, and they plan to double those earnings again in 2022. And that's why after it re-IPO'd after its restructuring, we had a move from $20 to $80 a share in pretty much a straight line, which is as good as it gets. And that has really been supported by funds accumulating from 190 funds to 215 funds. But the real driving force here was the earnings and the earnings per share growth. Now, the oil and gas sector is kind of different from a lot of other growth companies we're going to be looking at in that sales growth is not as pertinent to it as it is for perhaps a software company. The reason that would be is that you know, what really drives profits for an oil and gas company is the price of oil that it's selling. So, you know, they don't necessarily need to produce a lot more oil and gas to have much larger profits. That's kind of something specific very much for the commodity um, related companies. However, traditionally for long advances, you do want to see these huge sales increases. This is a rather special time as a result of the COVID pandemic. Uh, but this really shows how important it is that you have this record earnings per share. And it really shows that there's a change going on with the company and that change is being reflected in, in earnings. Let's take a look as well at RH, which is restoration hardware where they sell home furnishings, um, you know, higher end home furnishings. And this, again, I want to bring home the point of how important it is to have record earnings per share. 
And this is a company that had strong growth in the past, and they ran into some trouble in 2016 and 2017. As a result, the stock pretty much fell off a cliff from you know, $100 plus down to the uh, $30 range. However, we had quite a turnaround at the company. And you can see in 2017, we earned $1.27 a share. But in 2018, we accelerated back to $3.05 a share, which is the highest of the past three years and or some record earnings. That was matched with obviously strong quarterly earnings, strong sales, and this earnings trajectory went from $1.27 in 2017 to $17 in 2021. That again is what led to the enormous advance from $30 a share to over $600 a share currently, almost $700 a share. Along with that record annual earnings growth and record annual earnings was sustained earnings for quarter after quarter after quarter, which provided that fantastic runway for funds to keep buying and buying and buying the stock. And you can see as well, management owned 33% of the company, so obviously their interest is very much tied in with shareholders. But really, again, you want to see that record earnings. If Restoration Hardware was truly turning itself around, it had to have those record earnings. One point I want to drive home as well, beyond the fact that there were record earnings, was this stock absolutely underwent enormous volatility along the way. It's actually somewhat surprising. If you look at earnings per year, you know, $3.05, $7.70 in 2019, $11.66 in 2020, $17 in 2021, you have a rather consistent earnings growth record. However, the stock had dramatic moves to the downside and to the upside as investors are basically trying to figure out what earnings would be in the future. And so as a result, that's why technical analysis is just so important in timing your buys and sells and why oftentimes just earnings alone or sales alone are not enough for profitable investing. As we'll see later, one of the key components of being a profitable investor is really combining large upside returns with controlled risk on the downside if you're wrong because to be honest you don't really know for certain despite whatever earnings track record there has been in the past if though that growth rate will continue into the future that's where understanding the charts understanding the demand and supply in the marketplace will really help you to control your risk one thing i also want to point out here was the stock started to move up off the lows here in the march 17 quarter rather significantly before the first large earnings growth came back to the company. So again, investors typically have that three to six month window where they can see how the company is going to be performing in the future. And that always comes through in the market price. So you'll always be able to pick that up in demand and supply. And once fundamentals and technicals come together, that really provides your high probability opportunities to make large uh, profits in the market. The next stock I want to take a look at is Tesla. I, there's, there are few companies in the market that are uh, more, more debated than Tesla. Uh, I myself missed out on quite a bit of the advance. I never really liked the look of the cars, but uh, that's why sometimes it's important that you separate your thoughts on a company and a product from what the market is telling you. The market is really always right at the end. But what's important here that I really want to highlight is for a long period of time, as this debate went back and forth about whether or not Tesla would be a success or not, the stock price pretty much did the same thing. It just went back and forth in, in a range for, for several years. Actually, this chart, if you, it were to extend further back, you would see that Tesla had not done mu much since probably 2011. However, this towering advance from $50 a share to over $800 a share within a very short period of time started when earnings per share started to accelerate and turn positive. If you take a look at the annual earnings per share, as the stock was dormant, basically EPS or earnings per share was extremely dull. 57 cent loss, $1.73 loss. 2019, suddenly the, you know, Tesla made three cents a share and in 2020 made $2.24 a share. And there was that dramatic change into profitability that absolutely propelled the stock higher. Again, investors are forward looking, they had a window about six months into the future, a whole two quarters before the first major earnings per share growth of 140% for the quarter came into existence, the stock price already started to advance. So this is kind of a situation where um, you want to respond to the price action 
you don't have to catch, capture all parts of the move. It, it could very well be that you missed his first leg up because earnings per share were not yet there. You could have looked at forward estimates to have this as a candidate for a potential buy if the price action were, were to confirm. But even if you missed his first advance, there were significant gains after the COVID crash in Tesla. Now, the, this is a great example because Tesla was not really a benefactor of the COVID situation as Zoom was or um, Shopify or DocuSign, where they really benefited from the fact that people became more digital. Tesla is a car company, and for their stock price to accelerate this quickly in the midst of a COVID pandemic, it is real proof to me that it's really earnings per share, that growth that drives these enormous moves higher. And you can see that here. So despite every, the world being locked down, we had this phenomenal move higher thanks to that earnings growth per share. It had a lot of the other fantastic factors we spoke about before. There's a very strong 17% return on equity. Uh, Elon Musk is a major owner of the company. As a result, he's very focused at having the stock price advance. And this is just another great example of how all these important factors come together to create these stour. The, again, this is another perfect example of how all of these factors come together to create these towering stock advances. And if you boil it down to the key factors, you want record earnings per share supported by large quarterly earnings per share growth and sales growth. And I think this is the perfect example to see in Tesla where you had a stock dormant for so many years and only when that huge earnings per share finally showed up did the stock price respond and advance significantly. The next stock I want to look at is C Limited. Now, there are some situations where earnings per share is not the key metric. Traditionally, that applies to the technology sector. And the reason that would be kind of with the Amazon model where some companies try and grow so quickly because there's a major advantage in being the main player uh, that there are no earnings per share growth for, for a number of years as the company is building out. But sales growth is a key metric to watch. So many investors will buy the company, support the company through uh, equity financings if, if they're needed because they can see the towering sales growth and they know somewhere down the line, once the company has a large enough ownership of the market share, they can start to monetize that completely and deliver very large earnings per share. Just that's pretty much the Amazon model. For years, people would argue that Amazon wasn't profitable or only marginally profitable, but Bezos was really playing the long game in that he was growing the company to have a huge dominant market share of the online e-commerce uh, ecosystem. And now that he does, he's able to monetize it fully and Amazon is one of the largest companies in the world. So C Limited uh, is, is pretty much using the similar playbook and it has a similar business model in terms of e-commerce is one of their, their main areas of operation. But if you were to look solely at earnings per share, you'll see that they don't have any earnings per share. They have losses year over year. However, they have towering sales growth. If we take a look at their sales numbers, apart from a 99% sales growth in the September 20 quarter, every quarter had triple digit sales growth. Again, although this was a direct benefactor of the COVID pandemic due to their e-commerce exposure, and it had a tremendous run in 2020, which it's still at, at all time highs, this was a stock growing strongly in terms of sales and price prior to the COVID situation. And again, institutions are looking for a trajectory forward. They want to understand what's the story with this company. And this consistency of sales and this enormity of sales growth is really what caused so many funds to come in and buy this company over an extended period of time. Actually, before the COVID pandemic hit, the stock had already advanced from the low teens to about $50 a share, which is a rather significant price advance. And that was really supported by the tremendous sales growth. Again, you have management that has a big part of this company with 34% ownership and funds have been increasing significantly. One key aspect I didn't cover yet that's also very important is a lot of these companies are young companies and many are, are leader led or founder led. However, one of the important aspects I found is for it to be a company that has recently IPO. So I really prefer companies that have IPO in the past five or six years. Uh, so this is not really a financial metric. It's just a matter of this is company, the company that is new to the public markets. Usually they come public because they're looking for capital and that capital is going to be used to further accelerate their growth. And that's really where you find a lot of these gems. When a company has been trading for many decades, 
it's probably already owned significantly by many institutions. The story is very well understood and the majority of the growth is already factored into the stock price. The fact that these companies are younger, uh, prior to being public, a lot of their financial information is not known to the outside world. It's, it's held privately. So a lot, a lot of the information and the growth trajectory is being factored in and understood by institutions around the world. And as they fully grasp the potential of the company, that's where these huge stock market moves occur. So C Limited is not alone in being a company that is primarily driven by sales. Uh, MDB is another company where they're trying to rework the way databases function with a, a new uh, software uh, variation. And this is another company that, that has had a huge stock advance from its IPO and around $30 a share, we've advanced to almost $400 a share. And this again occurred with the backdrop of negative earnings per share. This company has not yet turned a profit. However, sales has been consistent, has been very large, and it hasn't been accelerating, but it has been very consistent. And that is the runway again that institutions are looking for. Fund ownership as a result has increased from 779 funds to 1,027 and management owns 7% of the company. As well, it's a relative, relatively recent IPO that it IPO'd in 2017. So those are the key variables. We covered a number of stocks. Some of them had, you know, most of them had towering earnings per share, record earnings per share, earnings per share acceleration, and all of these were supported by very strong sales growth. Those are the most pertinent factors that you really need to be aware of when trying to find the next super winner. Again, there are other variables you can look at, such as return on equity, how much of the company management owns, uh, you know, the number of funds owning a company. I would call those more ancillary numbers. They're also very important. Uh, they, they provide further evidence that you're on track to finding a major winner. But record earnings, huge earnings per share growth, and sales supporting that, sales growth supporting that are really the key variables to keep an eye on. And the reason I want to boil it down to only a few key variables is, as you'll see later, as we run through a lot of scans to find these next big potential winners, there are so many companies. And oftentimes, companies will have one or two variables that look very strong, look, look great, but others that are, are missing. And if you don't step back and look at record numbers, huge numbers, you're going to be missing out on stocks that have the largest potential. Because in reality, you don't need to own 20 or 30 or 40 companies. If you have five, six, or seven or eight great stocks, and of those two or three that are fantastic companies, that is really what you need to have enormous returns. Because when these stocks advance, as you've seen, they will have multi hundred percent advances. And a significant position of your account in just one of those stocks can be really be life changing or at least dramatically change the returns of your portfolio.